To make sandpaper, you need a lot of grit. There are thousands of tiny abrasive grains on a single sheet. The whole idea is to create friction. By rubbing the sandpaper against wood or metal, you can remove defects and create a uniform surface. It's ironic that something so abrasive can make things look so smooth and polished. Sandpaper often isn't made from paper at all, but fabric like polycotton. The cloth is unwound into a machine with a printing press. Rollers lined with rubber printers stamp product information onto the cloth. The cloth then travels underneath the printing press where more rollers apply a heat setting adhesive to the unprinted side. A computerized system measures the density of the coating to ensure that it's been applied correctly. Then, the cloth is pulled one floor down to the electrostatic pit. Here, the environment is kept hot and humid, perfect for applying abrasive grains to the cloth electrostatically. The grains are poured onto a conveyor belt in the pit. The conveyor moves the grains under the rolling cloth and between electrodes and ground plates. The system generates an electrical field that triggers a mini sandstorm. Once airborne, the abrasive grains stick to the adhesive coated cloth and become embedded in it. This method allows for even distribution of the grains across the cloth. The grain coated cloth now rolls out of the pit and back up to the main level of the factory. A technician cuts a swatch of the sandpaper, then peels away layers and makes three different cutouts. One of the cloth alone, another of the cloth with the adhesive coating, and a third, the grain and adhesive coated cloth. He weighs each cutout to confirm that the sandpaper has been formulated precisely to specification. He also examines the gritty surface under a microscope to make sure the grains are standing up evenly. This production run gets the go-ahead, so workers move the sandpaper through a 100-yard long oven. It has three different heating zones, each progressively hotter. The increasing heat bakes the grains into the adhesive. The sandpaper is now rough enough, but it's not quite ready for use. In the next step, a coat of resin is rolled over the gritty surface, binding the grains to the base. After the resin is cured to the surface, these jumbo rolls of sandpaper are stored in a warehouse until it's time to cut them down to size. Some rolls are sliced into big sheets. These will be made into commercial sanding belts, the kind used in heavy manufacturing. Another machine punches out sanding discs. And at this station, four rolls of sandpaper are simultaneously unwound into a machine. It carves the four layers into rectangles. These rectangles won't be used for sanding, but as grip tape for skateboards. From refinishing your furniture to nose grinding at the skate park, sandpaper will always give you an edge. And with so many grits to choose from, there really is a sandpaper for every job.
you have any comments about the show, or if you'd like to suggest topics for future shows, drop us a line at sciencechannel.com forward slash how it's made.